Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is just another episode on working this piece for the um, scrappy, shabby chic, scrappy Japanese rice bag tote. That's a bit of a mouthful. So for those of you who've been watching for a little while, um, you'll know exactly what I'm up to. But if you're a newbie and YouTube has just thrown you me, <laughs> Um, I'm making a Japanese rice bag with stiff sides and I'm slowly creating panels for the side of it in the shabby chic theme. So pretty much when I see a, a lovely idea, I want to have a go at it because I haven't tried it before or I want to repeat something that may be in a journal tucked away and I want to look at it every day. I've uh, like the weaving. Um, I create a side for my little bag. So let's get started. I have invisible stitched everything down. So, and I've trimmed it back to the size that the template needs to be. So now it's a case of weaving through threads and ribbons to start layering up the piece. As you can see in this one, there's a lot of shimmer there. And that is because of additional ribbon additional beads and then some stitching through and then even some additional tatting. So that's pretty much what I would like to do to this. So I've got my leftover bits and pieces from the first panel and I'm going to, this time I pulled out the old bobkin because I'm weaving through, I think I need it to navigate some of these straps of fabric. Now some I will do lying on top, but I'm thinking if I can find a little spot that I can get the ribbon through. Now I might need to loosen some of the little stitches. We'll see how we go. If I can get away without doing that it would be good. But there might be the odd little seed stitch in the way or the little invisible stitch in the way. So, like, I might end up, yeah, see, I can see there's going to be one there. I wouldn't mind that going through. What about there? I think there's two in the way there. The ribbon is crooked, so I'm going to say they are in the way. Oh, that might be all right. I will remove them. Where's my quick arm pick? There it is. So all I need to do is just slide that in there, catch those little seed stitches. And then when I reattach this ribbon, it'll catch that all back down. It often happens when you're piecing a slow stitch piece together you'll find that there might be a little stitch that is interfering with your new plan of attack for a piece and that's okay just loosen it off yeah that's pretty good I like how that's sitting that side of the ribbons a bit crinkled this ribbon was around something I think it's got the telltale squished sides, probably could do with a bit of an iron. So I might just um, might put a little pin in there. Just to hold it there. That's not going anywhere. The less pins, the better if I can get away with it. So let's just snip that off. I'll just allow that little extra in case it wriggles on me. So let's put, let's put a ribbon through the center there. That's very, that's very plain, but I could do some stitching there, which might make it interesting. Maybe we put it down this side and I'm going to go, no, come in one. But then I get rid of the writing. This is where it becomes fun. That's loose there. So I could get the ribbon 
underneath that. Let's pop it on the bobkin again. Oh, I can slide through there. Got it upside down, so let's try and twizzle it over. Yep. I'll stay on top of everything. Slide through there. Come out there. Yeah, I like that. You can really have fun with this. Now that's the creased end. We'll make it a little bit off-centre. Well, we sort of have to because the pins are going, are the little invisible stitches are going to be holding me where they want me to be. Okay. I'll leave it at that for now. I've got a cream one here, but only a little piece. Let's see where we can get that to run through. open so we could come under there under there and maybe that's stitched down and so is that maybe we just stay on top now we'll just do that yeah I like that So is everyone excited about the Roxy Creations Volume 4 project coming up? It starts, kicks off this Wednesday. I know I am. I don't know how, what the hang they've got in store for us. It's sounding very, very interesting. And a treasure hunt. Who loves a treasure hunt? I used to love that as a kid. Run around like a a goose looking for things. This little piece is too small, but we might be able to disguise the fact that it's um, a small piece by tucking it in. So we sort of need an end could go there and it would look like it's disappeared under those two yeah like that and then it could go where's my bobkin gosh 12 months ago I didn't know what the hang this was I did a overview of my needle book and I said in the video what the hang is this what would you use it for, is what I said. I did know it was a bobkin because when I bought it, it was called a bobkin. And it came with a, like a large needle. And then everyone said, it's a bobkin, it's a bobkin. You use it to thread like elastic through things or, you know. I was like, ah. And now, it's like my best toy. <laughs> Okay, that looks good. That looks like it's meant to be. So in the first piece with all of the ribbons, I just um, couched them down with a little thread just, just to hold them and then start the decorative. I think I'll definitely do the same again. And now I did put a bit of this sari silk in just to add a little bit of lumpy bumpiness to it all. I wonder 
if I can get it across the top there. Let's get it into the bobkin. And see what we can do. Oh, yep, we're through. And we'll go over that ribbon. So we slowly build the layers up. That'll just give us some real smooshy, smooshy surfaces like. And when I stitch that down, I can put stitches in it. Sort of really fun to stitch that. See if I can get, I think I need to come through here, but maybe I can get it to the side of that writing. Use the ribbon. Can I get under there? Yep. And then I'll go under there because that's yet to be stitched. So that can happen. That's a really soft satin ribbon, that cream. You can see where the pin has gone through it and nearly broken the, the line of stitches. It's a bit... Okay, pretty happy with that. So that one's represented. I might just pop a pin up here. Now some of these I could go straight to, you know, stitching through them. Like this sari, I probably wouldn't bother with a little satin stitch. Okay, that's that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'll get that a little narrower when I stitch it down. As narrow as that at least. Or no, I might just release that one stitch. Open it up a little bit. I can play within it a little bit more. Okay. That's pretty good. I think now it's time to do some stitching. Let's get the thread. This won't take long to get this secure and pins gone I might do down this one first so I'm just doing a tiny little stitch over the edge of the ribbon and then jump forward about a centimetre, catch it again, I can get rid of that pin, yep, just put a pin in this end because it's slipping around on me, there we go. Good. That catches the one coming across. Lovely. So 
So you guys are watching this Wednesday, but I'm actually filming it Sunday morning. And today we're going to take a flying trip up to see the house that we're building at Barham Heads. We've just got such a busy week. Um, this coming week we've got stock arriving and yeah, it's just a bad time of the year for us. Well, not bad time, but for any extracurricular activities. So we decided last night that we'd fly up, have a look at the house this afternoon. There's a few things we want to check. The, um, the kitchen bench tops are in and things like that. Some of the finishing things are done, so we just want to have a little look. We won't be able to get there for a few weeks due to our workload coming. So we thought if we don't go this week, we we'll, won't get there for fortnight at least. And there's a heap of rain coming. So by the time you're watching this Wednesday, the rain will be definitely well and truly here. And we had thought of going up Tuesday, Wednesday. But then last night we were talking about all this rain that's supposed to be coming for southeast Queensland, 150 mil in some places. Because we're going a fair distance to get there to the house, a good four hours north of Brisbane, that's a lot of area for this rain to impact. So I quickly booked a room at the local hotel. We usually stay with friends. We've got friends and family up there, but it's a bit short notice and we just want to slip up, slip back. Because, you know, it's like when you visit friends and family, it turns into a a massive palaver. <laughs> we start doing all these extracurricular things because we can't help ourselves. So I said to hubby, let's just book a motel. We'll slip up, have a quick look at the house this afternoon and tomorrow, Monday morning, for me, we're meeting the company that's building a bit of a shed out the back and he's also going to do our driveways well driveway and you know the concrete around the place when they pour the slab for the shed he said that their company can actually do all of the concreting so that'll be fantastic they can it's sort of the last piece to the puzzle you want to get your shed in and then um, from that point, you can start wrapping driveways back up the side of the house and the main driveway and also any paths you want around the house. So we're meeting him Monday to do a bit of a mud map of the driveway system. So that'll be good. It's still saying six weeks to get the keys to the house, but I'll believe it when I see it. We're not allowed in the house because they've been busy removing the cornice because they put the wrong cornice in the property. So they've brought in a, a team to remove it and reinstate the correct cornice. So apparently there's a lot of dust and yuck around. So the supervisor said, you know, don't enter the house. It's just not a safe zone. So, but that's okay, we can look through the windows. Just want to have a little look. It'd be good to have a drive. And then we'll come back Monday. So, it's just an up and back overnight. Go for a walk when we get there. Just have a bit of a break. I do need to have a good think about the the area where Pepper and Bandit sleep of an evening. We always have them in a smaller zone near our bedroom. And that's their, their bunks are in there. You know, they get fed there. That's their bedroom, so to speak. And it's usually got a, you know, a bit of a, a here in Brisbane, it's a temporary fence that you would put up if you were building a pool. We got a couple of those panels and just zip tied them together and that, provides enough of an area for them to be undercover, sleep, and then have a little toilet area off to the side if they need to go to the toilet. 
So I want, and it's really good because if they're, you know, being naughty and you've got guests over and they're just being too much, it gives you somewhere to pop them while you have maybe a meal or something. It's not so bad now because they're a little bit older, but when they're younger and rub, rumbunctious, <laughs> sometimes they're a bit overpowering for some people. So it was good to have that space just to say, righto, you two, you're getting too excited. Leave the guests alone into your bedroom. Send the kids to bed early. Isn't that the saying? So, yeah, that's the only area of concrete that I just can't quite get my head around how I want it to be. How I want to enter the area. I can sort of capture the doorway to the laundry. And I haven't got that here. It's the doorway to the bedroom. Well, up there it'll be the laundry and the bedroom. So I'm thinking I'll keep their food in the laundry this time, which would be good. And then I can come out of bed down to the laundry. So as I walk down the hallway, I'll pass the laundry, slip in there, prepare their food, fill up water bowls like the sinks there. You know, I think I think it'll be really good. But I don't want them crowding me as I walk out the laundry door because they do get a little excited that it's supper time or breakfast. At the moment, they're still fairly young. They will mature and grow a brain eventually. So I sort of need them, which is probably more of the enclosure zone. I need them back from that doorway so I can easily get out without having them under my feet. And then turn, I guess, and open a little gate. And then in I walk to their bedroom. So that's sort of what I'm thinking. You know, how I lay all that out. It's like designing with fabric, except I'm using metal gates and concrete. <laughs> it's the same principles, but... So that's what I'm working on next so this little piece will be really good to throw in the car and have with me for an overnight run because I can do some stitching on it. So most of that's secure at the top there. So what we might do, where was that pink one? Oh, I might, I'll keep going. Where's my, we've got plenty of time. Speak of the devils. It's school holidays at the moment. And there's a, a um, what do they call them? Where you can put your dogs in, your pussycats while you're away on holidays. Kennel, is that the word? There's a kennel way over and you never, you would never know it's there. But at school holidays, I can hear the, the um, dogs in the distance and around breakfast time, oh my goodness, the noise in there must be insane. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I don't think my phone would pick up that, but I can hear them and they're having breakfast. Just starting to quiet now. It's like the workers must be work, walking out with their bowls of bickies <laughs> and they are all very excited. Oh, I'd love to go over for a little look. Could you imagine the puppy dogs that would be in there? <gasps> all of the beloved pets. Yeah, see now it's gone real quiet. Everyone's got their biscuits for breakfast. <laughs> and then I guess they'd be exercising them and wouldn't that be fun? Taking all the dogs out for a little bit of a run around the paddock. Okay, so once again, just catching this uh, ribbon 
ever so slightly just on the edge. You could weave heaps more through this. This is just probably being a little bit light on. I was looking at this, this lace here, that there. I was wondering if I had another piece somewhere, but I think that was just a little bit that was floating around in my basket. I finished last night to the little square for the stitchery swap. So that's another one. If hubby's not up and about ready to go, I might film the next one of that. And then I can take that with me to work on. That'll be a video for next week or the week after. I'm not just not sure how the videos will <clears throat> all come together once we start on our stitchery journey i'm not sure if it'll be so much work that we'll be all busy busy and most of my videos will be just dedicated to that and everything else will take a bit of a back seat or it'll be a nice sprinkling of everything i hope so just depends i guess what i do with my pieces and how much time it takes to do everything just going to catch that little bit of ribbon. Just don't know what to expect. I know a few, a few of you out there are concerned about how the piece would come together, you know, what we're going to do. Don't stress too much about it. It'll come together. Once you have all the information, you'll be surprised how your mind will start processing what you could do, how it could look. I'm just going to pinch that together. I want that to be a little bit more ruffled or crinkled in there. That should be a lot of fun, that project. looking forward to working on the mannequin but I'm also pretty nervous about it because I've never done anything uh, three-dimensional in my stitching it's always been you know a panel or a book or a, it's never been a three three-dimensional piece so for the newbies treasure hunt I'm doing a bit of a homage to my grandmother and my mum the seamstress more so my grandmother she was a wedding dressmaker so a friend of mine and we were brainstorming you know what how am I going to present this so I'm doing a journal and um, a dress for a teddy that I had as a kid and a mannequin so my friend suggested it and she was like do a mannequin you could embroider onto the mannequin's dress your prompts so that's the plan so I have bought a little dress and that's my base because this seamstress me is not as good as my grandmother and I haven't made clothing for ages and I spotted this little 1950s frock and it was displayed on the same mannequin as I've got and it's neutral so the plan is to use that as my base and that way I can take it off the mannequin and bring it to the camera and work on it because I didn't know how I was going to film it but um, and I couldn't decide if I even wanted a mannequin in my room because there's things looking at me now but being that it's a dress I can take the dress off I can put the dress away if it gets you know dusty I can do other things on the mannequin if I really enjoy creating this three-dimensional piece well then I might um, you know do something else who knows I've seen those mannequins 
in Pinterest on Pinterest where they cover them in lace and that. And they just look beautiful. Mine will have a little bit of that because being a wedding dressmaker, I plan to work in a lot of wedding dress type elements. But I um, also want to work in cross stitch and tapestry. And, you know, it's a, at the end of the day, it's a dedication to grandma. It's not a wedding dress mannequin. So I'm looking forward to that, but a little bit, a little bit anxious about it. There we go. That is all secure all the way around. They're not coming anywhere. So now I can trim. Trim it all back. So we're square again. And now we can do a bit of stitching. Okay, there we go. Could have done that in a little bin, hey? All right, so let's have a little look. What did we do? So on the pink ribbon, we did a little bit of fly stitch with this old, old um, crochet cotton. So let's give that a go. I will have to navigate things like that, but I can go over and under and so now I'm just going to come up on the side of this pink ribbon, go across to this side, come up down here, I'm going to anchor my stitch. There we go, one stitch. So that's pretty much the plan now I can stitch my heart away here fly stitch and some feather stitch and some just running stitch some gold threads what thread did I use for the gold There's some little beads so I need to just put together a little pack of bits and pieces these are all threads from a Steph Francis um, pack. I bought some random threads that caught my eye and uh, hadn't used them so I thought this was a perfect project for, for um, and the question is I've come up to this cream lacy do I go over it? I think I will. I'm gonna go over it as if it doesn't exist. Oh, I just did a feather stitch. Huh. I jiggered that up. I should have anchored the stitch. Got that wrong. Started thinking too much. So we anchor the stitch down. There we go. We're off and racing again. Now we do... A little V. And then come back up. So you get the general picture on this stitch. As we scoop down that lace and ribbons with all sorts of little... I like this type of stitching because it makes you sort of stop and think, well, what else could I add? And what else can I add? And every time you think you're done, you just go and find another little spot to put some more stitches in and it just gets better and better and better. More and more dense with interest is... Lots 
see. Beautiful. I think what really made that first panel was the when I started adding the metallic threads and the shiny beads. That V is losing its Venus. <laughs> so I'm just going to stop, go back, because that V is getting a little bit Y-ish and not V-ish. If that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's try that again. So get our stitch in and come back up a little bit higher, I think. That's better. This is a long, long piece of ribbon, riveting viewing for you all. So I've right, got plenty of time. We're just stitching, stitching and chatting. Oh, don't go through my finger. I really like these threads. The crochet cottons that have that sheen to them. If you ever see them, grab them because they really lift your work. It's a bit of an old, old school thing, I think. Come on. probably do with a slightly thinner needle this one's quite a thick one and it's it's really making my fingers work to <clears throat> push it through all the layers so I probably need a thinner sharper needle just gripping the piece of work I can feel pressure through here in my wrist which means I'm hanging on a little bit too, too hard. Got to look after ourselves. That one's not a long enough stitch. Actually thinking I could go to the end. I don't have much thread left. And come on. I might end this one off because like the other one, I did like the the stitch and then I went straight through. So I might see if we can slither under there. Yes, we can. Go down and out. End it off. And then so that that doesn't slip and get all loose. I'll just come back through and put a little couched stitch over the top of it so that it just holds it because otherwise it could get a little sloppy. <clears throat> Especially this is a bag so it's going to get bumped and used and carted around. So potentially it could so let's just thread that up. And I'm just going to put a couple little stitches in, just itty bitty ones, just to hold the bottom of that fly stitch. You'll never know they were there. Got it. Happy now. So let's thread up the crochet cotton, the cream. I might even thread through. 
Here we go for time. Got plenty of time. I just was looking at this piece here. And that is this thread. The running stitch will be pretty simple. I'll just pick spots and do running stitch through it. So that's nothing real exciting. But I'm thinking we'll get this, this out. And I couched it down. Where are you going? Don't you slide. Let me just put a stitch there. That piece of sari silk is slithering around. So let's just catch that. If I had have picked up the crochet cotton, I would have started probably running, running stitch through all of that. But that's not very exciting. So we're going to move on from that idea. I can do that easily in the car as we drive up to up to Barham. So what I'm thinking is running some of this through. So some little pins and I just couched over it with this pink thread by the looks of it. Yeah, there's a little stitch. See it running through there and there's a little, little obvious stitch going over it all. Do I like that yellow? I don't think I do. I'm going to just pull that back a bit and get rid of that yellow. <coughs> What's happening here? Why is that twisted? It is a little fiddly, but take your time doing the this is an example of, well, not an example, as a piece. Just take your time to work it. So what I'm going to do now is just couch that into position. So I'll come with... Uh, Stitch. So I could go through with the invisible stitch first, which I probably should. Let me just stop there for a moment. Because I want this pink to be the decoration. So I really need to know that that is secure and not going to just slip out because it's couched. Unless the pink thread goes through. through the actual cordage. It's like a plaited cord. It won't catch it and it will. It could slip. So I'm just going to anchor it definitely down this end. So I think you get the general idea of how to layer up your piece. I'll have to come up with another one. Like I said, I think in yesterday's video, if you've got any suggestions. I had thought of log cabin. Something will come along, someone will say something and I'll go, ooh, that excites me. So I'm just doing some quick little stitches. I think it'll be prudent if I do, just to get it down. Changing to a bigger needle. I 
confidently cut that. There's some pink coming up in that variegation that, yeah, I want to get some of that pink in too. There we go. A couple more stitches. You could spend hours on these panels. Just adding and adding and adding. <clears throat> okay, I'm getting to the end. I'm going to remove that pin. It's a little bit short, but it will do the trick. That'll hold it. So then, where's my pink? We'll finish off with this pink. The beads are pretty simple. All I did was just find a little spot, stitched them all down in a row, and that just put that last little bit of sparkle onto the piece. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to go straight over the top of that cordage that I just stitched down. Try and keep my stitches as even as I can. And that just puts another little layer of thread. Kind of keep them straight, girl. It's a bit crooked. There we go. When I stitch my little beads into position, I put two stitches in every bead. That way if the thread, one of the threads break, you've still got it held by a thread. Little tip my grandmother taught me when she was beading wedding dresses. It's funny how you pick up these little tips from the grandmothers. Actually, if they were sewers, let me know if there's any little tips that have stuck with you having learnt to sew or stitch with your mum or your grandmother. I was always taught about dressmaking scissors. That was another one. Don't touch the dressmaking scissors. Even Grandad, he'd always have this joke about never touch mother's dressmaking scissors. Otherwise, you'll be in the dog house with the dog, was what he'd say. What else did she? Oh, nothing comes to mind, but um, it's when they least, when you least expect it, these little memories pop up, hey? Oh, here's a, oh, this is so off the track. So, oh, I don't even know if I should say it. <laughs> oh, goodness me. I'll say it because I'm sure we can all relate to it. So, when I was younger and just starting to obviously think about boys, my mum said to me one day, the secret to, you know, not falling pregnant before you want to be pregnant is to put a Panadol between your knees <laughs> and hold the Panadol there. And that way you won't get pregnant. And I've never forgotten that because when I was a kid for a minute or two, I would have sat there thinking about it seriously. But now that I look back on it, she was so cute. <clears throat> And I remember when I was dating my husband, <laughs> I remember saying to him that the secret to not getting pregnant is I put a Panadol there. And I think we were on date two or three, you know, it was very early on. And he, he said it was very wise. <laughs> said your mother is very wise. I don't know if he was being a smart ass or... Or he actually thought she was a genius. Gosh, I haven't thought of that for a while. So that's the little morsels that, you know, our parents say to us. 
And as we grow older, we like remember these little things. Oh, here's another one. Um, we were in the dairy milking and we were bugging mum and dad to go somewhere. We wanted to, where can we go somewhere? You know, every night was the same. It's after milking into the house and peel the veggies, cook dinner, have a bath, a bit of TV into bed. It was the same. And I was like, bugging mum and dad, can we go somewhere? Can we go somewhere? And mum would say, mum said, go and ask your father. So I took that as, oh, here's an opportunity. Maybe there's something they're thinking about doing and mum wants dad to make a decision, you know, like I was that devious in my mind. And I was thinking, oh, so I've shot over to find dad and he was feeding young calves on the bucket. So I'm bugging him, bugging him. Back to the dairy we go, still bugging him. Can we go somewhere? Can we go? Can we go visit someone? Can we, you know? And he, probably about 20 minutes later or so, he says, all right, we'll go somewhere. We're going to go to the blanket show. Hurry up and get your chores done. There's a couple more potties to be fed. Hose the dairy out. Let's just get focused on our tasks and then we'll clean up when we get back to the house and we'll have a quick bit of dinner and we'll go to the blanket show. What's the blanket show? You'll find out. So <laughs> my brother and I are racing around like gooses, getting every, all our chores done. And, oh, we were so focused. We were ready for dinner. We would went to have our bath and we were like, well, what do we wear to the bank blanket show? Dad said, well, look, put your PJs on because... You know, you'll be comfortable and nice and warm. And so we're like, oh, we're going to the drive-in. That's what we're doing. Going to the drive-in. Come on, let's quick. Get stressed. So, but why are you calling it a blanket show, Dad? So, yeah. So the end of it all, the blanket show, was bed. Oh, I was so, I was so Scotty. I was just livid. <laughs> They must have giggled. I, uh, you know, being an adult, knowing what's going on, and you've got this kid hook, line and sinker. Oh, I was so, excuse my French, I was so pissy for the rest of the night. It was nothing. He was just going to bed. It was a blanket show. But, yeah, I still remember it, and it makes me giggle. It was very clever now that I look back on it. And I hope one day I can do it to some unsuspecting small child <laughs> and manipulate their mind. Oh, I've never had kids, so I've never had the pleasure of manipulating a small mind like that. It just makes me giggle. I have done things to nieces and nephews when they were little to mess with them a bit like you know the easter bunny things like that footprints and things but uh that was a good one so i'm just got my classic old crochet cotton here just in the cream and i'm just doing some running stitch through so now it really is just layers and layers of stitches to get it looking interesting. I'll do some more of these, a bit of shimmer through. Oh, there's hours of work on this, which will be good. I shall get it done. And what I might do is I'm going to pause this video Leave a few minutes at the end there. I'll pause the video, take it away, stitch it, and then a few seconds I'll be back with it completed. And you can see what I got up to. And I would have come back from our road trip with it all done. And then we can wait to see the next project. which I have no idea. So in the comments, tell me 
a little story of what you remember your parents or a grandparent doing to you that was similar to my blanket blanket story that would be really fun I'm going to leave that thread there I might just grab my beads this is this is the pink one it might be a little there. there's a little container there I'd love to hear a funny story or a pearl of wisdom like the Panadol between your kneecaps. And if you drop the Panadol, you're in trouble. But if you can hold that Panadol there between your kneecaps, you will not, you will not get pregnant. So with these little beads, I might start... Where am I going to start? I'll start down here. So it's just a case of pick a line, any line, and then get yourself your little bead of choice and stitch him on. If you're thinking beading is not for you because it's such a slow process have a go because I think you'll be quite surprised how quickly how quickly they do go on as long as you stay threaded this is Reginald my bead needle he and I have a love-hate relationship I love how he picks up beads I love how he shimmers through the fabric but I hate how he spikes me with his hard sharp point and damages me but he's a good needle you know he's just he's got a bit of an attitude there we go there's three on thanks Reginald you're flying along what possibly could go wrong with me in the car Jigging along the dodgy roads that are in Queensland and Reginald. Can you see any issues coming? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just looked up at the screen and I can see we're within minutes of the golden hour. So... I will pause the video and I will head off on my road trip. I can't hear my husband. He is still in the burrow and he should be starting to get himself out of the burrow. Otherwise, it'll be midnight when we get there. So, yeah, I will say goodbye. Just finish this one little bead. Bring my thread up and then we'll put Reginald there. We need this needle for the bigger threads. Pop him there. Shouldn't need any pins, I don't think, but we'll chuck them in anyway. All right. Okay, guys. I think, I think that's it. We will pause the video and I will be back. With this completed, and hopefully it looks as shimmery and as pretty as that one. They're looking good. All right, guys, I will see you all in a second or two. Hello, everyone. I'm back. So a few seconds, well, not even that, pass for you. But for me, I hopped in the car, drove to Barham. That's four hours. Stayed the night. Stitched a little bit on the way. Stitched a little bit in the hotel room and then spent the day at Barham and Harvey Bay and then drove back that afternoon. So stitched a little bit more on the way back to Brisbane and my square is complete. It was lovely to have 
um, in the car with me because I didn't have to think too much and I just picked it up and did another row and then I picked up the pink and did some more pink fly stitched couch down some of those some running stitch added some gold thread this was my little um, container I took with me with everything I needed um, even got my earphones there in case I wanted to listen to some YouTube on the way so yeah lovely little quick road trip and I finished another square this worked out really well. I ended up doing a little running stitch around the wording there just to highlight it. And I like how it's just this little random feature. So really, really pleased with it. So that's the pair of them so far. So yeah, thank you, Sonia, for giving me the prompt and putting uh, weaving into my mind. So we've got one and two sides complete. So who knows where the adventure will lead and what the other sides will become, whether I'll do something similar or head off on a different tangent. If you've got any ideas or any suggestions, feel free to chuck it in the comments and it might just trigger a thought in my mind or I might see a video over the next few weeks or even, you never know, in the next day, YouTube can throw things up and I go, oh, never done that. And then I go to my colour scheme and away we go again. So stay tuned. It's lovely that this one's taking time. We've, we've done two already and they sort of went from start to finish quite quickly. But I'm really enjoying having this on the go and it's sort of becoming a sampler, if you will. And I can see more of them in my future because they're not too big. What are the measurements again? Because I'm now also working on the little squares for the stitchery swap. And they're a 10 centimetre space. And this is a 17 centimetre by 17 centimetre space. So... I, I like I like doing this style of work and if I've got some boundaries it sort of really adds to the complexity of the design so thoroughly enjoying my little shabby chic um, bag and my lining's ready it's just a case of working my array, way around putting some tabs and a string and um, yeah off we go all right, guys, I will leave you in peace. Thank you for joining me once again on the journey of the Shabby Chic um, Japanese rice bag storage tote. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it works. And um, I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.